Hello and welcome to Business Without Bullshit. I'm Dominic Frisby and this week we're bringing you part two of our chat with Desiree Whittaker, CEO and Managing Director of the Cadrona Distillery. And in this episode, we hear Desiree tell us about what it takes to create a truly unique and authentic signature brand of spirit. From the type of water used to the height of the distillery location and even the type of flowers that grow in the area, it all adds to the flavour, layer by layer. Welcome to The Art of Whiskey. So were you the original brewer of the, would you brew whiskey? Were you I the original was the original maker? founder and this was my dream. And so I had, I was um, in a different business altogether and I had been previously married and the worst happened and our marriage broke down. And so he left the farm and I was left with the farm um, and had a very good farm manager. So that was fantastic. But, you know, you do a whole lot of soul searching when something like that happens and I started making lists of ideas and then short lists and researched them, scrapped a lot, lists, short lists. And eventually I started researching perfume and most of a bottle of perfume is alcohol. So I had to learn how to make the alcohol. The alcohol took over. And so in May 13, I sold the farm and then moved to Wanaka. Uh, where was the farm? It was in South Canterbury, about three and a half hours from where we've set up the distillery. Ah, okay. And I should stress to our listeners, this is Canterbury in New Zealand, yeah. not Canterbury in Kent. So it took uh, it took six months to find the site, and uh, the site is in the Cadrona Valley, which is classed as out- Outstanding Natural Landscape. It's between Queenstown and Wanaka. And it's on New Zealand's highest mountain pass. It took six months to find that site. It took another year to get all of the consents to build, both the resource consent and the building consent, and then another year to build after that. Two and a half years prior to selling the farm, I'd spent two and a half years researching. So I was very fortunate in that my business, my farming business, was able to fund me to travel very widely. And I met some both into the United States where a huge renaissance was happening in spirit production and whiskey production. And then into back into Scotland uh, where the soul of whiskey um, is found uh, up there. Andrew, you are a veteran whiskey drinker. Have you sampled the products? She's, I have, I've literally just been given a bottle, which I was, it was taken off me when I arrived home. <laughs> so I was thinking, I was thinking on this way this morning here, I was thinking, my God, I've got to get hold of that bottle again. <laughs> but no, I, I have yet to try the whiskey. But you, if you look at New Zealand and where you're placed and the, the research that's gone into it, I, I'm, I'm sure it'll be exceptional. You mentioned it was at the highest pass in New Zealand, so presumably you're fairly high up. Does the altitude make a difference? Uh, we're at 600 metres above sea level, so that is that is high. And so what that does is, it with whiskey, it's a stamp of the place being put onto the spirit, uh, which makes it identifiable. And that is something that's interesting about us that does stamp our spirit Um the alcohol evaporates at a, or boils at a lower temperature, um, the higher that you go. And then that also impacts something called the angel's shear, which is the evaporation, really important part of the maturation of the whiskey in, in an oak cask, evaporates out of the cask, so the angel's taking their shear. And then the local air penetrates the cask and then interacts with the spirit. And so let's say you've got pine in the local area or rose, the traces of those will end up in the spirit. From the and, air? Yes, from the air and become wow. identifiable inside that spirit over time. And one of the things I often read on the side of whiskey bottles is, you know, eight years it's been matured yeah. for or 10 years yeah. or whatever it is. In fact, I know, I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec, I know somebody who's in the whiskey maturing business, but if you build like a really good widget, an app for a phone, you can, you know, build the app in maybe three months, get it uploaded and be selling it straight away. Are you waiting a long time in whiskey before you wait and make any money? We we intend to have a signature 10 as our classic expression. We have uh, we have some babies at the moment. So we have a we've just running out now of our first release, which was called Just Hatched. It had just earned the title of whiskey at three years old. And then just arrived into the country just a, a couple of weeks ago is our next expression as a five-year-old of uh, growing wings. And so we're we're using all under our, the, the name of the whiskey is Cadrona. We're using the 
New Zealand falcon as an as an icon of our spirit and using it to describe the way it's progressing when the when the stills were being lifted craned into the distillery before the roof went on this endangered bird the New Zealand falcon came and sat on top of one of the stills as it was being lowered into the building oh, wow. and then often comes back and sits at the end of the warehouse where all of the the barrels are sitting your angel effectively well wow, yeah and yeah. so so we're we're showing that progression, those baby photos, as we head towards a fully aged whiskey. How many other whiskey distillers are there in New Zealand? There's a handful. We are the largest and we're a pinprick. We're very, very small, a barrel a day. Uh, our, our stills, I think the laws have changed in Scotland now, but our stills would not have been legal until recently. Um, we have a 2,000 litre wash and a 1,300 litre. Why wouldn't they be legal? They had to be more than 3,000 litres. I forget the exact figure. And so it was so you couldn't make illicit whiskey and hide it, hide, ah, okay. hide your stills. And in theory, and the one thing New Zealand's got uh, that the, the Scotland doesn't is much taller mountains. I mean, Scotland is the only place, I think, in the UK with a mountain that's not a hill, basically, you know. Uh, but that height differential you were mentioning, does that mean in theory you can make better whiskey or it's just not it, that simple? It means that it's interacting with its environment in a different way to Scotland. Right. And so that the Angel Shear is, it's actually very close to what it is in Scotland, but it's different. It's There's a different ratio of water. The spirit is made up of an integration of water and alcohol and at different heights, different altitudes, um, different ratios or evaporators, the Angel Shear. And is the you know the peat is obviously a big thing in what in I mispronounce for most of my <laughs> life, but is actually called I'm going to say Islay, 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 Isla, yeah. Isla, Isla. Oh my god, I get so much crap from my friends for that. But yeah, is the is is the peat is that important? So I, I have a preference for I, every type of whiskey is delicious, and of course has to be um, yeah. you know tested several times over. In terms of Cadrona whiskey, it's an unpeated whiskey. I think over time you prefer non-peated. I feel that in it when you're a novice, you kind of you, you know the Lafroy and stuff is almost where you start as a sort of you know unbelievably you start with. Oh, sort of... There's a time of day for every type of dream. I love so. that. That's a good answer. That's mad though. So the air, like the very air, gives a little bit of a note to it, but there isn't that. The still's closed, isn't it? So that's inside the inside the barrels. It, in whiskey making, it's it's like a fine oil painting. You're building up every layer, layer by layer by layer. Right. And so it starts with the water and the the water source. And um, we use water from a well called Elvin's Well, which is my dad's name. He dug the well, and it's soft water, which is important. Uh, and then correct varieties of barley, so uh, distilling varieties, um, and then that all integrates together inside the mash tun. Um, every single decision that you make adds a layer upon layer. Um, the length of the fermentation, the yeast that you use. And if you drank the five-year, the just hatch versus the spreading wings, I think it was. Growing was wings. Growing wings. Is it very opinion-based, or if you didn't tell me, would almost everyone prefer a five-year to a three-year, or...? They're, they're baby photos at the moment, so they're um, snapshots in time that will never be repeated. And so right. uh, you can, just like a baby photo of a child in the progression, you can see the underlying character and particularly looking back once you get to the to the right. adult version. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so they're, they're very special, very, very special. I'm glad um, you did this, not perfume, I have to say. You know, oh, it's, it's much it's, more it's fun. Yeah. Much more interesting and sophisticated, you know, and I've drunk perfume, it's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, you, I use the whiskey uh, aftershave. Where's, <laughs> what's your view of Japanese whiskey? Because they're kind of the new kids on the block as well, aren't they? There are some wonderful, wonderful examples and perfectionists. I was about to say, don't mess with the Japanese. They're going to do that like to such detail, you know. I, I have been told that at one point, and it was credible source, very credible source, that uh, one of the distilleries was importing water from Scotland until they realised that their own water was was actually okay. So this is like a journey watching these 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 children come to life that's that's magic so the the character has been stamped in by the distillery itself and then it's maturing into something just like a person yeah the, the rough edges are being softened out and now a quick word from our sponsor 
At Ori Clark, we understand that many of our clients want to be better informed about the issues they face, but don't have the time to wade through all of the legalese and accounting jargon to get there. We know that people love our easy to read quick guides on the most common problems facing our clients. And if you're here, then you probably like podcasts. So we thought, why not combine the two and make it even easier for people to access the knowledge of our team of multidisciplinary experts. Dominic Frisby sat down with Richard Ory to talk about inheritance tax. When is the best time to do your will, make your IHT preparations? A will all the time. And I'd add a power of attorney to it, and all the enduring ones as well. But it's much simpler when somebody has a will. Even if it's just I leave everything to my wife or my children, you know, a simple will. It's, having a will makes life easier for everybody. Not having one is a, a more complicated because the government set out where the money goes, whether it goes to your parents or sister or whatever if you die. And so if you're going to plan, it depends on your wealth. I think if, you, if you're worth substantial sums, even when you're quite young, then you need to think about it. And you probably won't want to bother. This is the intriguing thing. But once you've got children uh, and you've got responsibilities, then you really ought to start thinking about it. You can find our audio quick guides in the resource library at auriclark.com or search for Ori Clark Quick Guides wherever you get your podcasts. And at this point, let me quickly remind you to give us a nice review on Apple Podcasts or follow us on Spotify so that you'll never miss an episode. Now, back to the chat. So there's a friend of mine, a chap called Paul Tustain, who started up a company called Bullion Vault, which is a gold store, an easy way to buy gold and store gold. And it, this, it became very big, the company, in, in the late noughties when the, um, gold had a big bull market. And Paul Tustain's done you know, he's done very well out of it. But the, the reason you buy gold is you, you buy gold now and then you store it in a vault and you don't look at it for five or 10 years. And then in five, or 10 years time, that gold bar is pretty much identical to what it was. But because of the devaluation of money and everything else that goes on, you hopefully assume that it will have appreciated by quite a lot. And then Paul, he had this business up and running very successfully. And then he just started another identical business buying young whiskey. And so you would put your money into with Paul and instead of buying gold on the, whatever, on the gold exchange and storing it, you buy whiskey on the exchange and you store it and whiskey does exactly the same job that gold does. Wow. Naively, uh, my friend is a bit older than me, he was 40 and I thought, oh, I'll get him a 40-year-old bottle of whiskey. Oh my God, have you <laughs> seen, I mean, I, I thought, well, you know, you see... T- 10, 20, there must be some 40-year-olds. Oh, God, I can't even remember. Like, you know, forget about it. The base cost is five grand or something for a well, bottle yeah, of average 40-year-old. You, you, know. you know the law of compounding, mm. whereas, you know, I think it's every seven years you double your money or whatever it is. But, you know, if you compound your wealth by 10% and then you get your wealth up to a million and then you compound it by 10%, well, that's another 100 grand. And, and so the, the longer you leave your money, the more it compounds and the more yeah, yeah, as, yeah. astonishing the compounding figures get. Presumably something similar happens with whiskey. Well, so, yeah, so eight, what, eight years is a sort of classic, is it? Well, ten will be for us. But ten, yeah. yeah. Somewhere eight, ten to twelve, yeah. somewhere in yeah. that range. And then people tend to what sell a 15 and a 20, and then that's about it. You know, you can get hold of easily. Is that fair? Or yeah, the the angels have drunk a lot by the time it gets to be a forty year old as well. The we, angels being the the gods of evaporation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. It's like osmosis. It's that. It, you, do you know the term osmosis? So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So the oak cask is acting like a, a filter on very simple terms, and so the spirit is evaporating out through very, very slowly, and the local air is penetrating in very, very slowly. It's an audacious plan, though. I mean, I love the fact that you sat and made lists, and you really researched and thought of it, and I guess, as you say, it was a gift that the farm gave you, a sort of an ability to take stock, and, you know, and, and then within that journey, like, what was the most difficult problem to resolve? The hardest part was deciding what I was going to do. And so that was that time of making lists. That was the hardest part. Once I got on that journey, the doors opened and it was quite incredible. The people that serendipitously I, I met along the way uh, who were so incredibly helpful and, and took me under their wing. So, for example, a, a man called Dave Pacquerel, who was the former head of Maker's Mark, 
very early in my journey. I met him accidentally and he mentored from the States. And then and then the Forsyths up in Scotland, um, Richard and Richard, uh, again, met them quite by accident and they guided me on the process. It's so, a friendly community then, is it? Some industries a, are quite like fashion, like... Christ, everyone's stabbing each other in the back, but whiskey's it's fairly a, friendly, isn't it? it? It's a salt of the earth people, wonderful people. What does the name come from? Cardrona? It's the name of Cardrona? the valley, and so okay, it's sorry. the Cadrona Valley. It's an absolutely beautiful place, a quiet little valley in the southern Alps of New Zealand. So that was this week's extended episode of Business Without Bullshit. Thank you to Desiree Whitaker for joining us. A big thank you to you, dear listener, and we'll be back with another episode next week. In the meantime, please rate and review us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And remember to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at bizwithoutbs, B-I-Z without B-S, where you'll find more useful business content. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching for us using the hashtags bizwithoutbs and hashtag oriclub. Clark, O-U-R-Y, Clark. Until next time, it's cheerio. Business Without Bullshit is brought to you by Ori Clark. We've been helping individuals and businesses cut through red tape in order to prosper since 1935. To find out how our team of multidisciplinary experts can help you, whatever your needs, email us at contact at oriclark.com. That is contact at O-U-R-Y-C-L-A-R-K dot com or via our website. Ori Clark, you provide the questions, we'll give you an answer.